on everybody uh well then what shall i do i will pray in the spirit and i will also pray in words i understand i will sing in the spirit This isn't King of the North, King of the South stuff. Oh, that's Daniel. I'm sorry. My brain's spaghetti right now. We're in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14. Well, then, what shall I do? I will pray in the spirit, and I will also pray in words I understand. I will sing in the spirit, and I will also sing in words I understand. For if you praise God only in the spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise God along with you? How can they join you in giving thanks when they don't understand what you are saying? You will be giving thanks very well, but it won't strengthen the people who hear you. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you, but in a church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10,000 words in an unknown language. Dear brothers and sisters, don't be childish. In your understanding of these things, be innocent as babies. When it comes to evil, be mature in understanding matters of this kind. It is written in the scriptures, I will speak to my own people through strange languages and through the lips of the foreigners. But even then, they will not listen to me, says the Lord. So you see that speaking in tongues is a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, it is for the benefit of believers, not unbelievers. Even so, if unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come to you in a church meeting and hear everyone speaking in an, in an unknown language, they will think you are crazy. Please don't think that has anything to do with what they call Pentecostal churches today. Please, just please don't. Unknown languages were people that would come from other countries. After the enemy or other lands, I should say, that were Jews. And they would be able to communicate with each other or church members. But mainly, they were Jews. And it all ended at the time after the apostles. After the enemy army is swept away, the king of the south will be filled with pride and will execute many thousands of his enemies. But his success will be short-lived. A few years later, the king of the north will return with a fully equipped army far greater than before, at that time, there will be a general uprising against the king of the south. Violent men among your own people will join them in fulfillment of his vision, but they will not succeed. Then the king of the north will come and lay siege to a fortified city and capture it. The best troops of the south will not be able to stand in the face of the onslaught. The king of the north will march onward unopposed. None will be able to stop him, and he will pause in the glorious land of Israel, intent on destroying it. He will make the plans come with the might of his entire kingdom and will form an alliance with the king of the south he will give him a daughter in marriage again this daughter in marriage thing in order to overthrow the kingdom from within but his plan will fail after this he will return his attention to the coastland and conquer many cities but a commander from another land will put an end to his insolence and cause him to retreat in shame we'll get the rest tomorrow i love you very much ask questions anytime that's what i'm here for